wounded! We need a medic over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. What's happening, What's happening Private? A couple of aerials flew in and dropped containers full of metals. They started shooting while our defense systems did nothing. What about the doctor? Where's Alvin? He's still out there. All right. There's one more thing. Before I got hit and dragged here, I saw something. I'm not sure, but I think it was one of our own soldiers that led Skynet's attack. Sergeant, we're outnumbered, and they keep bringing more wounded. We don't stand a chance. We have to evacuate. Is Alvin still there? He is, sir. Then we're not leaving. We have to bring him back and see what the hell is going on with those defenses and brief Commander Baron on what's happening here. I'm moving out. You stay here with the wounded. You want me to break the radio silence? At this point, it doesn't matter, does it? Understood. Go ahead, sir. You two follow me. We have to reach those defense systems. Yes, sir. Spiders up ahead. You got it. Lead the way. This way. Good to see you, Sergeant. What's the status? We've got a defensive perimeter set up just down the road. Doesn't seem to be working. Skynet truck reinforcements behind your back. Now they're between a rock and a hard place. All right, we need to reach our guys. Let's clear the way. Shoot the tank! 
We need to rescue the dog before those tanks reach us! Oh, shit! We're too late. They're already here. Clear! Wait here! I'll go get the doctor! Oh my god, I'm actually glad to see you. What happened here? Why are the defense systems not working? They are working, but their target filtering has been reset to non-hostile. One of Baron's messengers came with the order to temporarily change it, so I did! Baron's messengers? We need to leave now. Yes, let's do that. I'm all for that. Are you all right? We need to move. You don't have to tell me twice. Escort secured. Go! I don't like this! I don't like any of this! Ariel! Okay, go! It's turning around! It's right behind us! Don't look back! Good idea! You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Hey, are you alright? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Hey, <laughs> glad to see you alive. Thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case. Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware?
Wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. The truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick hurt, I started to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry, I changed my mind since. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You've a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. Thank you. It means a lot. Are you kidding? It's the least I can do for helping us all this time. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think about it? I didn't know what to think. Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. Lay still. Don't move. Uh, did you talk to her? I is she mad at me? If I follow her orders, then I'm a bad guy. If I don't follow her orders, then I'm a lousy, incompetent egghead without a spine. There's no winning with her. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So, uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Jacob. How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up, and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Have you tried looking for him? I've looked for him for a while. 
I went to the place where we said we'd meet if we ever got separated. But he wasn't there. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway, what I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, all right. This is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. I sure made his day. That huge guy. Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to Perry? Skynet got hold of our position. We had to leave our shelter. There were a lot of casualties, and he was one of them. He died a soldier. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first medal I ever destroyed. I'm not surprised. You were still just a kid. That doesn't mean I didn't have a kill count back then. It just consisted of people. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time.
Patrick, you're up? There are people who need help more than me. Anyway, I can't talk. I have to bring something important to Aaron. Flamethrower. If I could get close enough to take a picture.
Better be worth it, Ryan.
Right, Skynet's listening. Time to look for the second track. Got him too. Ooh, his goggles look intact. Let's see the last picture he took. The infiltrator. It's back. Baron was right. Commander! Talk to me. They're dead. Everything turned out the way you said it would. Copy that. Get out of there. We need to figure out our next move. Let's meet at the docks. Get there as soon as possible. Over and out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Vehicle storage destroyed. Good to hear, Rivers. Now proceed with your mission. You're still alive? Good. Apparently Skynet's got a real hard-on for you. So we figured why not use you as bait? Aren't you afraid that Skynet will bring a lot of firepower if they know we're both here? Afraid? No. Prepared for that eventuality? Yes. We've got eyes on the ambush site from every angle. If anyone shows up, it means they were listening. What if it's one of our guys, or just a scavenger? Too bad. We can't have anyone or anything sabotage our plan. Not this time. This time? We were very close once before. For years, we've been preparing for the final attack. But it took just one man to fuck everything up. That day, Perry... Our previous field commander died, and I inherited control of South Division. Since then, I've been making sure that no one fucks up again. We've got movement. Take position. What do you have? A hooded man's walking down the street. Might be a scavenger. Rivers, you saw him. Is it the same model? Is it the infiltrator? I can't tell. We're waiting for your signal. I think that might be it. You think? Good enough for me. Cease fire! Cease fire! Target down! I repeat, target down! Go check him! Eyes on the target. Proceed with caution. Is he dead? What the fuck? It's the target! You can't get away. Fire at will! He's in the open! It's in the open! It's a fucking machine!
Open fire! That's one ugly son of a bitch. Commander. We got it. We finally got it. Good job, Rivers. Stay there. We're on our way. There was no doubt anymore. Skynet had created a cybernetic organism. It was designed to blur the line between a man and a machine. People started to think that there were Terminators amongst us, wolves in sheep's clothes. Some of us left, even though we hadn't seen any other infiltrators yet. Or at least, we didn't think we had. And that fear of not knowing was what turned the tide of this war. That night, Skynet 1. Uh, I still have to run some tests, so f for now I would say no. We need some more time, Connor. I know you don't want to hear this, Commander, but if there's one person who can help us, it's Dr. Mac. Mac? It, we don't even know if he's alive. He is. He's in the Hollywood Hills. We knew a time would come when we'd need him again, so we've kept an eye on him. Wait. You've been watching him without telling me? Let your emotions cloud your judgment. That's why I decided that Mac's whereabouts were no longer This is bullshit. Concern. He can't just magically fix all of our problems. He's a man, not a god. A man that makes that's mistakes. Enough, you know what happened last time. He's the reason Perry's dead. I said that's enough. Sergeant Rivers? Yes, sir. Techcom believes that being marked for termination is a badge of honor. A sign that we're doing something right. We wear it proudly. And knowing you're wearing such a badge, Rivers, all I need to trust you with handling this mission. Commander Baron will fill you in on the details. 
Good luck, soldier. Over and out. <clears throat> Looks like you're going to Hollywood Hills. Dr. Edwin Mack is the one who taught us how to use Skynet's weapons, so there's a chance he can do it again. Take him that second generation plasma rifle and see if he's able to reprogram it. If we want to use Skynet's weapons, we need to bypass their encryption lockouts. How will I find him? He's obsessed with surveillance. So when you get there, look for any cameras, biometric sensors, or any other tech stuff. He should be around. That's it. What do you need? Was Mac the one whose drone you smashed? Yes. Yes, it was. I've never told this to anyone, but... Before I met Mac and Perry, I was wandering alone. Didn't have a map, so I drew one myself. The first people I came across were two guys. Old enough to remember Judgment Day. We camped out together. They gave me advice, we shared some stories. Sounds nice, right? See, there are still good people out there. <laughs> they weren't good. Although, not cutting my throat in my sleep makes them more or less gentlemen. When I woke up, all my things were gone, including my map. There I was, lost in the desert. Thirst and hunger. I knew I was gonna die. I passed out with my face in the sand. But next thing, I was lying in a bed, bathed and wearing clean clothes. You're lucky someone found you. Someone did find me. Too bad it was Skynet. Through the window I saw thousands of Terminators. First I thought it was a work camp. But it was something else. A Skynet research facility. They kept me alive, but I didn't know why. I thought I was the only human there. But after a while, someone came into my cell. A man. Well-dressed, clean-shaven. You want to take a guess who that was? An infiltrator. In a way. He was a traitor to his race. Bastard was selling every piece of knowledge the machines didn't have. In return, they gave him everything he wanted. When he was done stuffing his face with food, he had another request. He wanted a whore. It lasted months until I got to wrap a towel around his neck and make his eyes pop. You don't want to see people for what they really are. I've seen their true face. That traitor, those two guys in the desert, Mac. They all showed it to me. It's not pretty. The truth is, the only reason I fight for the Resistance is because I despise people just a little less than the machines. Um, anything I should know about Dr. Mack before I leave? Only that he can't be trusted and he's highly manipulative. So you need to stay cautious. Sure, let's trust someone who gets called Dr. Death. That won't bite us in the ass. In the meantime, I'll see what I can learn from the new CPU we acquired from that infiltrator. This could be the breakthrough that we've all been waiting for. I need to concentrate, so please don't disturb me. Jacob, do you have a minute? Of course. I've heard that you're going to Hollywood Hills. Well, with Baron yelling like that, the whole shelter heard. He wanted me to tell you if I needed anything, so here it is. When you get to Hollywood Hills, could you stop by my old house? It's near the Griffith Park tennis courts. I wonder if Peter went there and left something for me. 
I know he'd be stupid to go there since now it's behind the Annihilation line, but then again, he was always full of stupid ideas. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Look at him. He never talks to anyone. He just sits there. I bet he's one of those machines. Jacob! What's the situation like in the shelter? Not that great. People are getting nervous. A lot have already left and even more planned to leave. Even Mark and Laura saw them packing earlier. And what about you? Uh, just the thought of running again is making me sick. Must be getting old. Plus, we got everything we can need right here. Where else would I go? Besides, I have faith that Baron would never let anything happen to this place. She's way too uptight about security. Earlier, you said that a new era started. What changed? Well, for one thing, with Tucker dead, I became the new leader of the group. Something I never expected or wanted, for that matter. What did you do about it? That same night, I looked around at all those people who survived and... I felt scared. Scared of what they expected of me. I started to walk away like I was on autopilot. I don't know if I wanted to run away or to kill myself, but, but then something surreal happened. I found a metal door in the ground in the middle of nowhere. I was real unsure about what I might find under it, but what I did find was the aftermath of a massacre. More Terminators? That's exactly what I thought at first, but it turned out to be something even more scary. It looked like they decided to commit suicide. I couldn't understand it. To me, they had everything. Food, water. They even had a case of beer. So, I got shit-faced and started crying over my brother's death. But I realized something. I realized that I could maybe survive there. Did you stay there by yourself? No. I told everybody about the place. I felt I owed them. After that, we were all right. That night, I learned two things. Firstly, that it's okay to be scared. Secondly, that there are two sides to everybody. Ironically, me being a scaredy cat turned me into a good leader. And that's how I found that place, and that's what motivated me to help others. But Tucker, well, he was a leader from the start. But he had an ugly side, too. He killed those who opposed him. He was a real scumbag, but he was my brother. He made me want to be a good person for the both of us. A hangover wasn't a high price to pay for that lesson. Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware?
Jacob, I didn't see you there. Where are you going? I'm going out scavenging. Don't worry. I'm past thinking about running away. Knowing how much you'd miss me made me not want to leave. Where's Patrick? He's getting ready. I'm taking him with me. I figure it's time for him to see what's out there. Is everything okay? You seem far away. <clears throat> Nothing can get past you, can it? I've been thinking about the day we met. I never told you how we really ended up there. You can tell me anything. I know I can. That's why you're the first person I'm telling this to. That day, loud hammering woke me up. When I came downstairs, I saw my father nailing the window shut. Through the crack, I saw them coming. Hundreds of metal heads and their red eyes. Even though they're just empty shells, I could feel the hate radiating from them. What did you do? I made Patrick stay upstairs and went back to talk to my father. We argued for a minute or two, and I tried to pull him away from the window. He pushed me away. I tried it again, but he shoved me. And this time I fell. <clears throat> I didn't recognize him as he was reaching for a shotgun. He said, I shouldn't worry about the machines. They wouldn't hurt us. I don't even remember how. The gun was already in my hands. I closed my eyes and went someplace else. <coughs> didn't even hear the shot. I didn't hear Patrick's steps either. He saw you? He did. He was staring at me like I was a stranger. He didn't scream or cry. He just stared. I threw the gun away, grabbed Patrick, and tried not to notice the hole in my father's unmoving chest. As we ran, I could hear them coming, so we found somewhere to hide. Then you came. I wanted to tell someone about all this, but I was afraid to. I'm glad you did. I am too. We talk a lot about how heartless the machines are. And I started to think that maybe I was too. I probably would have convinced myself of that if it wasn't for you keeping me sane. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would find a friend in times like these. What's with the dogs?
You're alive. No time for that. Do whatever it takes to get everyone out of that shelter. Do you understand? They're not safe there. What? Why? God damn it! What does he mean? Get everyone out of the shelter? Dr. Mac, is that you? The Resistance needs your help. Mac! It would be a shame to lose that camera. Now, why would you do that? Because we don't have time for this. Come out here. Skynet has developed a new Terminator model, the Infiltrator. You've seen one already? We've captured one, and we need your help. Are you there? How do I know you're not an infiltrator? You've seen them. You know how incredibly lifelike they are, so you should understand my concerns. Head up that hill. If you want me to help you, you have to take a test for me. Test? Yes, to determine whether you're a Terminator or not. And be careful, I'm watching you. <laughs> Oh, they're actually trying to fight you? Very clever way to make me think that you're not one of them. Unfortunately for you, I'm not any sweet fool. We don't have time for any of this. Just tell me where you are. I am not a robot. Living tissue would make you a cybernetic organism, not a robot. Words have meaning. Conversations between human beings... It ...would be a lot easier if we all just trusted each other and understood the deeper meaning of what we said. Keep that in mind during this test. This mansion is filled with Terminators. They've been trying to find me for a while now, all eight of them. Well, I guess with you in there, that makes it nine.
My patience is wearing thin. Why am I even here? Here? On the stage, you mean? Um, because I wanted you to recite a poem. That's right, that's why I got you on this stage. To invoke the fear of public speaking in you. This will allow me to check your emotional response. Very important in these sort of tests. So, if you could go ahead and recite a poem. In the shadows where we live, searching for compassion. Oh, you're actually doing it? I wasn't really expecting that. So, you've been taught to obey orders. I see. Oh, now wait, and be quiet. They regularly patrol this area. Don't let them see you. So you know I'm not a Terminator. Of course I do. They are way better shots than you. Then why are you making me do all this? <sighs> because I want you to grab something for me before I help you. Turn left when you leave the theater. There you'll find a plane crash site. My spider scout should be stuck somewhere around. Just grab it and bring it back to me in one piece. Skynet completely took over this place. I could do something about that.
I've got it. Good job. I'm in my vault in one of the buildings up the street. Meet me there. find a locker nearby. Huh! 
that's the locker room. I hope it's not you, Peter. Poor Aaron.
This is it. I know it looks tempting, but please do not destroy that plasma container. It powers this whole laboratory. Sorry for making you run around like that. But because of the recent increase in Terminator patrols, I couldn't get to that spider scout myself. Can I see it? Thank you. I have a gift as a token of my appreciation. While you were out looking for my spider scout, I used some leftover parts to make a new radio for you. I've been picking up your signal for a while now, and I imagine that Skynet has as well. So, I've made it harder to decipher. You won't have to worry about them eavesdropping. You've been listening, so you know why I'm here. Yes. Now, let me see that gun. What a beauty. I've got to tell you, if Skynet wasn't so gung-ho about killing everything... <laughs> What's interesting about it is that the matter inside is far more condensed. That way, it releases more energy on discharge, dealing much more damage. And also, its plasma blast is violet, so that's different. Can you bypass the encryption lockout so we can use it? Alvin couldn't. Alvin couldn't bypass an egg timer if his life depended on it. I'll do it, but it's not that simple. First, you'll have to bring me Skynet's latest security codes. Security codes? They will allow us to access Skynet's mainframe. But they change them regularly, so I need you to connect to any HK unit and download the newest security codes. To do that, you'll need my code reader. When I was... Excused from the shelter, they made me leave all my equipment behind. Alvin should have my code reader. Okay, is that everything? As far as the security codes go, yes. Then I'm moving out. Actually, I've got a question about that infiltrator that you have there. Is it intact? Or more specifically, its neural net CPU? I've been hacking Skynet's units, and I'm noticing similarities in their patterns. I think I'm ready to reprogram the CPU from that infiltrator. It's more powerful than any other. Should I ask Baron about that, too? No, 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 she can't know about it. She would not approve. I know how this sounds, but you need to steal it for me. What? I'm the only one that can reprogram that chip. For some reason, Skynet has started to learn at a geometric rate. We need to prepare ourselves for whatever's coming. And I believe that having an infiltrator on our side will give us the advantage. Just think about it. Commander. Rivers, what's the status? Max alive. He will help us, but he needs a device he left at the shelter. All right, we can do that. Report to me when you get back. Over now. Over now. I have to say, you're doing quite well without my help. What are you doing here? You have to get the ones you care about to leave the shelter. They'll be in great danger if you don't do what I say. But remember, Jacob, that has to stay between us. Why? Because things need to play out the way they're supposed to, that's why. I have been here from the beginning. Each of your friends already knows the reason they need to leave. You just have to remind them. Do you know anything about a CPU that Mac wants me to steal? I do. If hacked, we could take over an infiltrator. Dr. Mack is capable of doing that. I'm not so sure if Alvin can. I think you should steal it. Can I tell Commander Baron? No, she won't allow it. Then she will start to question you and keep you away from your missions. That cannot happen. Who the hell are you? That, I can't tell you. 
It could change the choices that you make in the future, and we can't have that. So whatever happens, you can't know my identity. Not yet, at least. I think I'm more confused than I was before. Just stay focused. We'll see each other soon.